And by the way, this is unlike any time in Paul's ministry. God didn't do miracles like this all the time. But here in Ephesus, because Paul's only goal was to magnify Christ, because he didn't care about magnifying himself, his name, his status, God especially blessed Paul's ministry like at no other time in his life. And it, it's amazing to think about. But look at what happens. When Christ gets magnified in your life, something happens to you. And this is what happened to the church. Look at verse 18. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Verse 19. And many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lifetime, many lifetimes. That's 200 years of work at average rate wages. So we're talking about multiple lifetimes of multiple people. That's how much it would be very much. And then verse 20. Well, I don't want to get to 20 yet. What's the second thing, the second choice? Number one, we want Christ magnified. Number two, God's people are consecrated. I, I keep getting the questions, you know, that come up, and several of you have told me that you ask all of the speakers the, the same set of questions. I think about that's exactly what I used to do. Only I didn't ask him. I took him out to a meal. I, I, you know, that's how I met John MacArthur. I walked up to him and he says, I would like to take you out to lunch. And he looked around. He just got done speaking at a place, a chapel, and there were hundreds of students there. And he looked around, and everyone was going that way to lunch. And he was left at the front. And he says, well, I guess nobody else wants me. You can have me. I thought, oh. And I went to lunch for three hours. I asked him questions. I don't remember eating anything. I just asked him questions. I just said, how do you find that in the Bible? How do you study? How do you memorize? How do you read? How do you... And when he got all done, he said, you know what? He said, why don't you just come on staff? And he said, I'll just show you all that stuff. And that's how he started, on staff. So ask John MacArthur out to lunch. You might be on staff. No. What happens that God wants to happen when we start magnifying Christ in our life? We start getting consecrated. We start shedding tearing off the old garments of sin, the, the things that so easily beset us. Let me just talk about this. When God's son is magnified, choice number two, God's people get consecrated. When Paul originally began spreading the gospel in Ephesus, he was not talking to commendable, God-honoring saints. It says in Ephesians, they walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And then Paul goes on in Ephesians to say, this church conducted themselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. These were Diana worshipers, sex addicts, materialism controlled, occult practicing sinners we're talking about here. But when God saves them, he doesn't just leave them there. And they made the choice to cooperate. What I'm saying here is they cooperated with sanctification. How did they do that? Oh, we don't have to guess. Remember? Nothing's new in Revelation. This is talking. This, this church in Satan's shadow is chronicled. Uh, let's, let's look at what Paul taught them. It's in Ephesians 4, right here, starting in verse 17. So look at Ephesians 4. You want to know how they did it? How did they magnify Christ? That's Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. That was just they listened and said, we got it, Paul. How did they get consecrated? That's Ephesians 4 and 5 and 6. And look what happens in Ephesians 4, starting in verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk like the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. He said, you guys aren't supposed to live under the shadow of that temple to Satan and all the wickedness they do there. Why? Why? Because those people, verse 18, have their understanding darkened. They're alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, the blindness in their heart and their past feelings. And they give themselves over to lewdness. And they work. Isn't it fun to read the Bible and actually to see what it's talking about? He's describing what the Ephesian people that lived around that temple, the wonder of the world, what they lived like. They lived just like this. Ignorance and blindness of their hearts, verse 19 who being past feeling have given themselves over to all this. Verse 20, but that's not what you learned from Christ. Well, he didn't say that's not what you learned from me. 
Paul stood and said, I want you to follow me like I'm following who? Christ. That's right. That's 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. I think you've memorized that. This is great. Hey, we're supposed to go out in the world and say, I want you to follow me because I'm following Christ. Now, it's okay to say follow me if you're following Christ. And so Paul is teaching them right here, you're learning this from Christ. I'm the one that's speaking to you, but what I'm telling you is from Christ. Verse 20 of chapter 4 of Ephesians. If indeed you've heard him and, taught, and taught by him, and the truth is, is in Jesus. Now verse 22. How do you get consecrated? You ever heard uh, most pastors have three points you know, in, a, in a story or something? Because in homiletics, you're, you know, people can only remember so much, so you have three points. This is one of those three-point sermons Paul gives. Look at it. It's in verse 22, that you put off. Now, if you could see my Bible, I have a big red box around that. And then, look at verse 23, and be renewed. So you put off. Secondly, you be renewed. And then look at verse 24, that you put on. Okay, I'll tell you about one of my bad habits. As a man... I would wear the same thing every day. Women are not like that. I, it's comfortable. I like it. And so I have a wonderful, wonderful wife. Sorry, that's where you were yesterday. Wonderful, wonderful wife. And you know what she does? She actually gets rid of some of my clothes because I would keep wearing them until they fell apart. I mean, I am a creature of habit. And so the fact that I'm wearing my, I call it my pink shirt, is because Bonnie bought it for me because I had another shirt that I wore too much and it looked really ratty. And so she bought me a new one. And I went in to get my regular shirt and I looked and it wasn't there. I went, honey, what happened? She said, well, honey, I got you something new. And I had to choose to put it on. Now, you understand the Bible is written for, for basically the New Testament was primarily slaves that were in the church. That's why they met at night. The slaves worked all day. That's why Eutychus fell out the window and died, and Paul had to raise him from the dead. He was from the area around Ephesus. It's because they were mostly slaves. And so these people, I mean, they were, they were trying to get this in, but they were tired and they worked all day. And so Paul said, okay, I'll make the Christian life real simple. It's like getting dressed. You put off, you be renewed, you put on. So it's like getting undressed, taking a shower, and getting dressed again in clean clothes. Okay, isn't that simple? Now let me ask you. Is it like Iron Man where you go like this and the machine comes around you and goes and takes it off and puts it on you? No. It's a choice you make. You have to take off, then you have to go to be renewed, the shower, and then you have to choose to put on. That's the Christian life. That's, they chose to not give Satan a foothold in their life. They were constantly shedding. Every time they remembered something from the old life, Every time they walked by that temple and they were tempted again because they remembered that prostitute or whatever used to tempt them, they decided they were going to find a new way across town and not walk by that because it reminded them. See, they put off the old. But they didn't just put off. They were renewed. How do you get renewed? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You all know this verse, right? And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing. Of your mind. You know what that means? That means if you're memorizing verses for any class or course, you're not memorizing them just for the course. You should be memorizing them for the rest of your life. I, I actually, on my phone, have pictures of my verse cards from the 1970s when I was just like you sitting in college. And I had to memorize all these verses and all the Zawana verses and all the BMA verses and all the whatever I was in program verses and camp verses. Why? I didn't do them just for camp or to get a five points on the quiz and then forget it. You know, I can really learn those fast and get it over with. Mm -mm. That's the only way I can take a shower. That's the only way I can be renewed by the renewing of your mind. It's the Holy Spirit who takes the word of God that totally transforms our minds. And I'm only on slide 13 of 30. And we have 10 minutes, okay? So my question, are you making a choice every day? 